What's going on guys? Shop Show 2024 brought to you by A3 Tactical. A3 Tactical builds the highest quality, most unique products and offers them at a great price to the consumer. Don't forget to check out A3 Tactical. We are here at the PTR booth. I'm here with Mike. Mike is the brainchild behind the vent line of suppressors. So Mike, tell me everything vent. What, what's going on with the whole thing? Sure. So as you said, this is our new line of suppressors. This is our vent line. So we got the VSM-1, the VSM-2, and the VSM-3 in 308, 9mm, and 5.56. So fully monolithic 3D printed titanium construction, right? So relatively lightweight, super strong. So it's about 8 ounces. Of fire, yeah, right? so for the 9mm, you're talking about 8.9 ounces. Okay. For the 5.56, right around 11 and a half. Okay. And for the 308, where it's currently sitting right now, it's about 13 ounces. So they're lightweight. They're a little bit heavier than I would like, but that's only because we do have them as full auto capable right now. So uh, every single one of them is full auto capable at the moment. Uh, you'll have to go to the website to get the specific limitations on barrel length, caliber restrictions, all that kind of stuff. But that's all going to be on the website. Um, so it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, this texture that you see on the outside here, because uh, as I said, we are using additive techno uh, manufacturing technology to do this. So that texture on the outside is actually mimicked on the inside as well. So it's a constant wall thickness is what you're getting through and through, which gives you supremely higher you know, yield strength than you would get normally if it was just a straight walled uh, kind of thing. And then the real magic behind this is the way that we're tackling the concept of kind of like a flow forward type design, right? So that's kind of the buzz term at the moment. Everybody's looking for low back pressure kind of cans, right? So these three cans are all in their own unique way, low back pressure systems, meaning that when you're shooting it, you're getting significantly less blowback and less pressure to the shooter and to the shooter's ear. But the thing that's kind of differentiating our cans from you know, the competition, what everybody else is doing, generally speaking, when you have that kind of flow forward type design, you're sacrificing your performance at the muzzle end of the can for increased performance to the shooter. Generally speaking, right, when you're talking about these flow forward, low back pressure type systems, you're definitely you know, getting a higher performance to the shooter, but you're sacrificing your performance at the muzzle. So we're tackling that problem a little bit differently. We have a patented technology going on inside these cans known as purposely induced porosity. And so what that means is there's a metal lattice-like structure, a metal foam structure that's built directly into the suppressor body. And what that does is it allows the muzzle gases to actually exit the suppressor in places other than just the exit vector at the middle of the distal end, right? Okay. And so in doing so, you're reducing the velocity of the gas, you're stripping the heat out of the gas, and you're lowering its pressure before it's reaching atmospheric, right? And basically that culmination of everything kind of results in a much better overall suppressor rating than you would have with traditional flow, flow forward type designs, right? Um, and so in doing so, we are getting the high performance at the shooter's ear, but at the same time, we're getting really, really high performance at the muzzle end as well. I think that's a good, point you're making because Q-Science tested your cans yes. and said that, if I recall, correct me if I'm wrong, it was, for the 9mm at least so far, has been the, the best performing correct. can that they've seen so far. Correct. To date, right, uh, so the 9mm can is currently sitting at the, the, the top yeah. of that list and the 5.56 is as well on the Mark, on the Mark 18. Um, the 308 has yet to be tested and test results be released. Um, and I think part of that kind of limitation is going to be that at the moment, Q is only really working uh, with on 308 calibers with a lock breech system. These these cans are primarily designed for semi-auto hosts, right, because of the low back pressure nature of them. So what's ultimately probably going to happen is we're going to end up with two SKUs in the 30 caliber realm, right? We're going to have a SKU that's geared more towards our 91 series and more towards AR-10 and all that kind of semi-auto host. And we're going to have a skew that's geared towards, you know, a locked breech type uh, bolt action firearm, that kind of thing, and whatever. Because the performance metrics between the two, they they're just completely different systems in the way that they work, right? So, you know, there's no such thing as a one-stop solution for those kinds of things. And I think I want to backtrack. And someone said about the heat escaping, uh, majority of the heat escaping. Yep. I shot this at range day yesterday on the pistol. I shot all three calibers at the range day, and it. Is noticeable cooler than any of the suppressors that I own, even more flowy, you know, type of suppressors. You know, running, you know, back-to-back -back mags on the pistol and the nine mil, 
it was still cool enough to where you could touch it and not burn yourself. Now, extended periods of shooting, I'm sure it would, it would heat up more, but just in a few short bursts of shooting, it was cool enough to still take on and off and touch it and it wasn't burning your hand. So I think that's something to be, to be said about design. Well. Sure, yeah. Uh, so, okay, what are we looking at as far as release day? I know the 9 is essentially out now. Yeah, so the 9 is currently available. Uh, the 5.56 five, is also currently available, right? You know, we're all kind of at the moment subjected to the limitations of Form 3s with the ATF and stuff like that. There's a lot of backlog and stuff like that. But these two are orderable on the website and through certain distributors and dealers and stuff like that. And then uh, the timeline for the 308 is we're looking at somewhere between a month, two months or something like that for probably the availability to start to trickle in for that would be my okay. guess. Okay. Yep. Now, okay, so no, no, if you can say any of this yet, uh, future looking forward being that these have been performing so well is there any plans to do shorter k, k type pants check out hrt tactical gear for the best high speed gear you can find so you know nothing official no promises sure. made no you know whatever because this is shot you after all yeah, everything right. gets everything gets released and teased right. and whatever and then right. it never comes to fruition but yeah. you know they're there are things in the works such as K versions. There are things in the works such as Inconel versions. There are things like that. You know, we take everybody's feedback. You know, you, you can't please everybody, right? Sure. You make the titanium version, everybody says, well, you should have made the Inconel version. You make the K version, everybody said, you should have made a full length version. So, you know, the nice thing about additive manufacturing is it's very easy to manipulate your current SKUs into new SKUs and to, to do rapid prototyping and all that kind of stuff to really put out new products at a, at a pretty quick pace, at a competitive pace, right? So, you know, I would say just keep, everybody keep your ears peeled for the shorter version, for the Inconel version, for whatever, you know, you have in your heart that you're desiring, like, just know I'm already thinking about it as the designer and I'm hoping to get it to you as soon as I possibly can. All right, a couple of last questions for anybody who, who may not know, first time seeing it. Um, MSRPs for these, what are the okay. MSRPs? So, as the designer, I'm pretty bad at the business okay. side of things, but I'm going to do my best here. MSRP on the 9mm, I believe, and the 9mm, as I was told, the 5.56 five, uh, as well, is about 1425 okay. and the MSRP for the 308 is going to be about 15 Okay. Last question. As far as uh, compatibility, what kind of uh, tablets ah, are you great using? Great question. Hub? Yep. yep. So, 5.56 five, five, and 308 are both hub pattern in the back, Bravo pattern in the back, That's right? Bad. So, whatever you're... Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. So, whatever you're previously invested in or whatever, it's going to slot right in. There's plenty of room in the blast chamber to accommodate, I would say, 90 to 95 percent of what's already oh, out right, there. Right, yeah. um, and then for the, the the nine mil, you got alpha pattern in the back. So, you okay. know, we're going with industry standard. It's really the only logical thing to do at yeah. this point. There's so many good companies out there making mounts, making whatever. So, you know, for the people that already have three or four hundred dollars into mounts, yeah. You know, I'm not going to shoehorn you into buying our proprietary crap. So well, we appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I guess one last thing. Are these user services? They are not. So because of the, the monolithic nature of how they are, they are all one piece, right? So except for the exception of the direct thread yep. adapter in the back, it is one piece. So, you know, our recommended cleaning schedule is somewhere between like, you know, 700 to 1,000 rounds. And of course, all of this varies based on the amount of abuse that you're putting on it. So, you know, if you're doing a thousand rounds on a 10 and a half inch Mark 18, or you're doing a thousand rounds on a 16 inch, you know, AR-15, like that's not the same level of abuse. So, you know, your round count may vary based on that. But, you know, somewhere in that realm, if you're giving it a CLR soak, or, you know, some of the other popular solvents that are on the market, uh, you give it a good soak. And as long as you don't abuse it well beyond that mark, you're gonna be totally fine. All right, Mike, I appreciate it. Cool, man, absolutely, time man. Today. Thanks for going through the event. No problem. All right, guys, stay and subscribe for more Chacho content.